So, Andy, um, we're going to talk about my song citations that we're doing in our uh, Poseidon's Realm concert on the 28th of September. And um, it's the origin of the song actually relates to National Marine Aquarium because I wrote it after a visit by Kelvin Boot, who used to be based here. He came as part of a science week at Gatehouse School in Dawlish. I think it might have been 2001, that long ago, and uh, gave a very inspiring talk about cetaceans, and I went straight back home and wrote this song, Cetaceans, uh, which is quite a sort of poetic song about the, the you know, singing across hundreds of miles of ocean, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's uh, very evocative of the, the ocean depths and so on. But you give us a sort of practical introduction to cetaceans, explain what they are and what they do and yeah. why they're made where they are. Well, cetaceans are probably the most famous of the marine mammals. So they are closely related to us. They breathe air, they give birth to live young. Uh, they even have hair right at the start of their lives. That disappears quite quickly, but they are mammals just like us. And they're probably the most famous because they are the largest creatures in the world. So the biggest creature you can find on our entire planet is the blue whale, reaching to about 30 metres long. Uh, they have a mouth which is the span of metres wide, but interestingly enough, can only swallow something the size of a grapefruit. Um, because when it comes to our uh, cetaceans, our whales, our dolphins, our porpoises, you get two main types. You get your toothed whales, which fall into things like our dolphins, killer whales, uh, and they're all a bit like this. So we have here a skull from a dolphin, and very similar to our, our mouths, they are filled with teeth. Except, obviously, these teeth here are a little sharper than ours. Mm. So you get your toothed whales. But then you get the second group, which we call the baleen whales. Now baleen whales, instead of having teeth inside of their mouths, actually have sheets of this. And this is called baleen. It is made out of the same material that we find in our nails. And you would have um, sheets of these attached to the upper jaw of the whale's mouths. And they basically act like a giant sieve, a giant filter. So all of these hairs here, they'd be used to catch the creatures, the tiny um, animals and plants floating about in the water called the plankton. So you have some of the largest animals in the world relying on some of the smallest creatures in the sea to get their food. So do you know how much a full-size blue whale would consume in a day in terms of plankton? So something like a blue whale is estimated to eat around 40 million krill a day <laughs> to be able to get enough food. 40 million of them, and uh, quite often working with uh, school groups and children, comparing that to having to eat 40 million Brussels sprouts, generally not quite a popular idea, but 40 million chocolate buttons tends to be quite a popular oh, idea. Right, okay. But uh, 40 million of them just to be able to sustain you know, the weight themselves. weight that would equate to? Or oh, tons of tons, food right, throughout okay. the year. Um, yeah. And all of this is literally from swimming around, opening up their mouth and filtering out the food that's floating yeah. around in our oceans. Wow. Yeah. So what's this? So this here is a skull from what we believe was a bottlenosed whale. Uh, you can see, obviously, the mouth and the jaw. I'm not going to try and open this one up. It's uh, a little bit larger and heavier to be able to do that. Um, but around here, this is where you would find the brain and the eyes. Um, and when it comes to the um, whales and dolphins, if we're looking at the toothed whales, they are fantastic at something we call echolocation, which is the ability to send out a sound uh, that sound will then hit an object or a fish or a person that's in the water. It will bounce back to them and they will be able to tell what it is. Mm. They will be able to differentiate between food and not food. They will know the size of the object. They will know if it's swimming away or swimming towards them. It's mm. an absolutely fantastic hunting ability. Yeah. But they can also use this um, potential sound that whales can make uh, to communicate to each other. So the humpback whale, absolutely famous for its songs mm -hmm. and its sort of singing ability. Yeah. Uh, whereas I think it is the blue whale that is uh, known to make the largest, sorry, the loudest uh, natural sound in the world. Apparently it is like standing on the launch pad of a rocket taking off oh. going into space. <laughs> but the problem is it's so low, such a, a sort of a deep um, tone that we can't hear it. We just feel it. Presumably. Yeah, so yeah. there's that absolutely the billowing noise, wow. but so low we can't hear it. Ah. <laughs> Amazing. But yes, absolutely fantastic creatures yeah. that we can find swimming yeah. around. And uh, I think this here gives us an indication of the noise, oh, the size. This very heavy object wow. uh, is just one vertebrae or oh. part of a backbone or a spine from a whale. Wow. Now, we're not sure exactly which type of whale, but you can tell just from the size it is absolutely huge. 
They could have up to around 50 of these uh, making up their backbone, depending on the type. Weight. Yes, absolutely. Quite heavy. Yeah. Extremely heavy. That's amazing. But then whales can also then go down to this size. Okay. Much smaller, much lighter. So this would have probably come from either a sort of uh, a larger dolphin or a smaller whale. Again, hard to sort of uh, ID, but we can tell that it is part of that um, that whale or dolphin's backbone. Fantastic. Thanks, Andy. That's okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>